A POST web API is similar to a GET web API because both receive a request from an external system and send a response. The difference is that a POST method lets an external system create new data in Appian. Let's create a new web API from another template. Under Create, you will find a template to write to a data store. We'll use this to allow an external system to add new customer data to the Appian database. Once the template is selected, you need to provide additional information. I've already created a CDT, data store, and data store entity constant for a customer. I'm going to use it here for this web API. I'll name this object and add a description. You can see the HTTP method is set to post. This is because writing to a data store creates a new row of data, which matches with the functionality of a post HTTP method. For the endpoint, this should be descriptive to help others understand the functionality. Let's use add new customer and create the web API. Before we modify anything, let's take a moment to understand what the template provided. Starting on the left with the expression, you can see a local variable is defined. It's using the abang from JSON function to convert the information sent in the body of the request to an Appian value and then casting that Appian value type to the API customer CDT I created previously. Next is the function calling the write to data store entity smart service. This function has parameters for the data store entity and the value to store, as well as two for on success and on error. For the data store entity parameter, Appian lists the DSE constant added when creating the web API. For the value to store, it uses the local variable defined at the top. For on success and on error, it adds the correct HTTP status code to return with the response along with a header value and a body. If the write to DSE was successful, then the response to the external system will include the stored values from the database. If the write to DSE was unsuccessful, then the body will include an error message. We can test this using the test inputs on the right side of the screen. Because we use the write to data store entity template, Appian created a header automatically. Let's click test request and see what happens. The test results show a status code of 200, meaning the write to DSE was a success. The test response also includes the content type header and value. Below that, it lists the smart service executed, in the grid, you can see the type of smart service, the parameters sent, the details of the execution, and how long it took to complete. Finally, you can see the body of the test response. Remember from the expression, the body of the HTTP response should contain the values written to the database. In this case, the body contains the CDT fields and nothing else. Let's look at the body of the test inputs. When we tested this request, the body field didn't contain anything. This means that no data was sent for the test request. Let's add some test data to the body. Because we're using the abang from JSON function, we can use a JSON blob. The entire blob needs to be placed inside the curly braces, and both the field name and the value need to be wrapped in quotation marks. Now we'll test the request again. In the test results, you can see the write to DSE was a success again, and this time the test data we placed in the body of the test request is included in the test response. We could also look in the Appian database at the customer table. You can see the two rows we added. Row 10 is from the first test, which did not include any values for the different fields. Row 11 is from the second test that did include values, 